Hey guys, this is Jared. I'm joined with Matt here today. Uh, today we are going to be talking about Tough Coat. Um, Tough Coat is a top side paint that you use uh, as like an anti-skid texture on the boat. Uh, it's become pretty pretty prominent here uh, for us this this last couple of years. We've we've actually had quite a few people that are using it. It's a, a fairly easier application than like putting down carpet on the top of a boat or you know getting an anti skid texture that's actually brought into the fiberglass that gets gummed up over time. Or if you're doing any work uh, on the boat, this is a, a really easy solution. Uh, Matt. Uh, just like the last couple times he's been on the show is our, our resident expert because he's actually done it so you know, we're gonna walk through basically prepping the area going through the application the, the do's the don'ts um, so Matt why don't you go ahead and start with us talk to us about you know why you went with tough coat what was your your boat before and, and what was the process of prepping the boat so actually when I got my little whaler it had tough coat in it it was rolled on by the guy who uh, you know who did the project originally before I got it when I was in high school and it did great for me sure. I, you know I I ran the boat for probably four years and pretty pretty hard and it, it held up really good over time and then it sat for a little while while I was in college didn't really get used a whole lot and uh, I liked the material and it had already been put down, so it was kind of a no-brainer for me to go back with it. Right. And it gave, you know, when I was ready to redo the boat, kind of ground up, it gave me the opportunity to make it happen and make it the way I wanted it. Cool. And again, working here, we offered it, so it was a, a good right. deal, right? Yes, that, that was <coughs> convenient. Um, actually, when I did it, we did not offer Tough Coat on the website. No. <laughs> we do not. now, though. <laughs> but, yeah, we added Tough Coat to the website maybe a month after I did the project. <laughs> Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Yep. So, you know, you, you went with the tough coat, you decided to go with that. The guy that you bought the boat from already had it. Mm -hmm. Walk us through, you know, the, the application, the initial steps for you. What what did you do? I know that there's there's some prep work that goes into getting the area ready. Yeah, so, so in my particular instance, uh, my boat had bottom paint. I knew I needed to get the bottom paint off. I didn't want it on there. I was going to be painting the outside of the boat. So we had somebody come by the house to soda blast that off. And when they were there, I had them soda blast off the tough coat from the inside of the boat as well. Just soda blast did. is similar like a sandblast. It's or? like a sandblast, but it's not as aggressive. It's softer. So you don't really have to worry about it doing too much damage or anything like that to okay. the fiberglass. Um, you know, if you if you sit with a sandblaster and fiberglass long enough, it'll go through. Okay. But, you know, the soda blast was softer. And it you can do it in different places you know it degrades and you know in an exterior application so right. uh, we had the uh, tough coat that was in there soda blast it off and that left us with a nice already etched surface okay so you know normally when you're working with tough coat you do want to kind of scuff the surface up before you put the primer down that did it all for me in one step. So you're basically prepping the substrate, getting off the old tough coat so that mm -hmm. you know, you're not applying tough coat over the top of other tough coat just in case some had started mm -hmm. to pull away from the deck of the boat. Right. Get right. back to the original material, still had some primer on it, mm -hmm. but at that point because you soda blasted, you didn't need to do what would normally be sand you going know, through sanding, sanding just like to that. etch the area. Right. Okay. Right. Cool. So you've got everything off of the boat. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? The next step was priming okay and uh you know what the primer goes a lot further than the paint does as far as how much comes in a can and such okay so priming the inside of the boat was a pretty quick shot you know just rolled it on got it ready and then came back to do the paint the next day yeah so that's one of the things that we actually get quite a few questions i think about that you know you could probably speak to this more mm -hmm. people will call in and ask do i need the primer do i need the primer and the answer is yes the answer is i would certainly say is yes and that there's a couple of different instances and we can get further into that a little bit later but um, you know you mentioned putting tough coat down over tough coat you can certainly do that but even tough coat recommends if you're going if you're not going to remove the original tough coat paint beforehand okay you still need to prime over the top of it okay good that's good information so um, you know what I'd like to do um, you know we talked about prepping the area and priming it I'd like to switch over here actually um, we've got a uh, couple pictures of, of Matt's boat as he went through the process here. So some of the, the different befores and after. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, walk us through what we're looking at here, Matt. So what you're seeing there, that's that's after the soda blast. So um, you see some of the, the primer that's still, you know, the residue kind of like left here in where the gel coat lighter, and such. Right? 
Yeah, so okay. it, you're seeing a little bit of where the bench seat was sitting in the boat originally, too. So gotcha. uh, I think when the guy did it originally, that area really didn't get painted all that, or maybe it just didn't get as much exposure. So, okay. uh, yeah, there's, there's some different heavier areas, and that's after I applied the paint. So this is, you've primed and now, now painted. Primed this is the final, final product here before putting in the kit. Yep. You can see here a little bit of the texture here uh, on that. So, yep. you know, the, the, the process again, clean prep the area, sand it, scuff it up, prime mm -hmm. it with the primer. Um, and I'm going to put down the paint. switch over onto the site here um, mm -hmm. to, to kind of look. There's, there's two different primers. Um, there's two or three different textures here that are available. Right. So, you know, from a, from a priming standpoint, why there, there's two different primers that are offered, right? I, mm -hmm. I think one is specifically to metal. Correct. And then the other two, are you able to apply that? You know, one of the questions I've taken before is, mm -hmm. are, what can you put this on, right? So what are, what are some of the different materials that that will adhere to? So the CP10 primer, which is what you see the two part primer in the, in the image on the screen right mm -hmm. now, that that primer is designed for fiberglass, wood, or concrete. Okay. And it will apply to just about any of those materials, regardless of what the um, you know treatments are and such. Now, the metal primer is specific to metal applications only because it it does have an etching um, like compound to it, so it will bond better to the metal. And bare metal only. Uh, I believe yes, it's bare that, metal that I, it can bond that it only can bond to, rather than if you had like I think we've got an actual picture here, like a painted boat of a painted boat, right? right. So let's flip back here and look through uh, this boat, right? So this mm -hmm. is a boat that's like a duck boat, um, you know, little John boat here that they it looks like they painted with like rustoleum to begin with, right? Something along those lines. And so here you would imagine that they're not they're either they're either getting that back down to bare metal mm -hmm. to use the metal primer. Yep. Or they're using the water-based epoxy, which is a two-part, mm -hmm. which is something I think we should bring up as well. You see that the the, the water-based metal primer comes in one can. Right. This the, one is a two-part. The CP10 comes in two cans. There's an a, part A and part B. But uh, when you pop the tops off those cans, you're gonna you're gonna say, "Geez, they only sent me half of what I need." Each can is only half full. So what you're doing, what you're going to do, you pop the tops off both cans. You take one, pour it into the other. It doesn't matter which way you go. Mix it up, and then lay out your primer on your, on your surface. So we're not we're not taking half from you. No, we promise no. you it comes that way. That, so you're able to to mix those cans. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the painting process itself. Before we switch back over to to look at some different boats. Yeah. Uh, you've got three different textures here. Mm -hmm. The painting process. They actually recommend that you're using this roller. Um, if you're going to roll it on, yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Did you roll or did you spray? I actually sprayed. Okay. I rolled on the primer, and most of the time that's how you're going to apply the primer. But With the I, same roller, or are you using... No, the primer you can use just a regular Any roller. roller you have. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the paint I decided to spray just because I really don't like painting myself. Right. It, it's one of those things that I find more of a chore. So I wanted to get it done as quick and even as possibly as I could. Yeah. Um, so as far as spraying, right, I mean, is there a, a specific gun or hopper that you have to use? or Tough Coat recommended at the time when I did it, they recommended a, um, a specific, like, central pneumatic uh, spray gun that had the ability to handle the larger particulate that's in the paint. So the okay. rubber that's actually in the paint can that you mix up before you pour it into either into your pan that you're going to be picking up the paint with the roller or before you put it into the hopper. This I think the I think the spray gun cost me like twenty bucks. Okay. And at Harbor Freight it wasn't there an expensive go. thing. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just it was able to handle the larger particulate. They said that there was a you know I put a pressure regulator on the air compressor to keep it around like fifty to fifty five psi, and I went to town. I think that's something to note. Matt talked about the the particulate that's actually in the can, right? A lot of these mm -hmm. these uh, decking applications, they're like a two part deal, right? So you've yeah. got like the paint that you put on first, and then you'll take the sand and sprinkle it over the top before you apply the next coat of paint. Right. You know, all of it's in one can with tough coats. So you've got these chunks of rubber that settle to the bottom of the can that you mm -hmm. stir up. But with the right sprayer and the roller, you're able to put that on correctly and right. have even distribution of those particulates once it's mixed. Yeah, I think I had a, a paint auger, like mixing auger. Yeah. And I think Tough Coat says to make sure that you mix it 
they tell you like a, a really long time that you got to stand there and mix with a drill on this paint mixer right. they, they said like five minutes or so <laughs> but just making sure that you get all the particulate mixed thoroughly within the paint is kind of the point behind that and uh yeah it worked out worked out really well cool huh. so you know we've kind of gone through the the prepping we've gone through the priming of the area which is necessary the painting and the application um you know let, let's go through sorry go ahead i was gonna say let's cover the textures real quick yeah that's actually a good point right so there's three different textures i'm gonna switch over here we actually have a probably a better photo mm -hmm. let me switch our screen over and there we go um there is a photo here that we have of there the different go. textures so this is something we just shot of a couple different swatches right so you can see the smooth the medium and the coarse you know mm -hmm. some of the different applications that you would see is you know this is something that isn't isn't necessarily soft on the feet right so you'd see something like this with a course for like a work boat the course could be yeah like a work boat or uh you know if you're putting it down um you know, on concrete, on like a ramp, somewhere where you really needed like so good solid traction, but right. you're not going to be barefoot. Um, yeah, it, it is going to be a little bit more rough on the feet. Awesome. So your medium is what you went with, right? The medium is what I used, yeah. At, at the time, I didn't know that there was a fine option or gotcha. smooth rubber option. And going back, I probably would have gone with the, the fine for my application, but everything that I've had has worked out great. Sure. So, you know, the, the rough, you wouldn't be on barefoot. The, the medium is fine for you. Sometimes you said it, it when you kneel down, it bothers your knee. It's, it's a little bit rough on like knees, but okay. uh, it, barefoot, great traction, not a problem when you're barefoot. Uh, it, does, it does a really good job. Awesome. And then the smooth, of course, you know, this is something that we've recently just added here to the site, um, having multiple different options. So, you know, we, we've got this ability here to, um, you know, again, offer the best thing that fits for your needs. Um, mm -hmm. Let's switch back over here, look through a, a couple before and afters that we've got sent in from different customers. So I think we've already gone through, well, this one is, I think it looks like a like a houseboat or is this? That, a, that's a pontoon Pontoon, yeah, deck of a pontoon. pontoon. So this is the before, you see all of the different carpet that's just shredded up here yeah. on the deck. Um, Seen some traffic yeah. there. That's a good close-up picture showing, you know, the the texture on the on the deck. Looks like they actually, you know, might have even removed everything that was on the deck when they painted it down. So they got full coverage. Um, you know, really nice, good application. Awesome. So let's go back here. I think we saw this boat. Yep. yep. So we're good. That's the little duck boat we saw earlier. Um, you know, here's a, a good one. Looks like a kind of like a barge or a deck boat. Is that another <laughs> pontoon? You know, I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe. That's an awesome <laughs> boat. <laughs> so you've got a like a pontoon with an open deck here. This is them prepping the area. Um, you can see they're spraying it on here, yep. application wise. They recommend two coats too. That's something right. that we didn't talk That's about. That's a good point. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever about how much do I need? What do I need for the primer? What do I need for the paint? We've got a calculator on our site, mm -hmm. plus an entire team of people that you can call and get that answered for you. And they say about a gallon of paint covers 50 square feet. Okay. And I think... The quart's like 45. So it's like a quart of primer covers about... Actually, this. the primer covers more than the paint. Of a quart. A quart so of it's about primer. 60 square feet. Okay. So yeah. a quart and a gallon of the paint is, is, is kind of the, the equal. Right. Okay. All right, so going back through here, we'll look at, again, Matt's boat that we saw. I don't think we looked at this final finish picture. It's <laughs> looking sharp, man. You know, that's something that, that I was going to ask as well. You know, I, like we said, I, I've seen your boat. You know, you've mm -hmm. done this. How long ago did you paint the tough coat on your boat? It's five years ago now. Five years. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's held up well from what I've seen. It's, it's done great. Yeah. One, uh, one customer I was on the phone with one time asked me, you know, what about staining? You know, does it stain? Are you able to get stains out or... So after I painted the boat, I had it here at the shop on the side of the <clears throat> side of the building under some oak trees and it I got a bunch of oak leaves in there and I was stressing I was like I don't know how I'm going to get these these stains out but you know and I, I scrubbed it pretty good. It sat there for a couple months before we finally finished the project and those oak leaves really piled up. Okay. And we had plenty of rain to let them soak in. Gotcha. And uh, I actually used a magic eraser and it came right and, out. Yeah, I, I scrubbed with, uh, you know, regular, like, um, soft scrubs, yeah. something along those lines, and I got 
95% of the stains out doing that. Okay. And some of the more stubborn, older ones came right out with that. Is that soft scrub? Was it like like sandpaper, like rubbing off the material? Or do you think it was actually just getting the stain out of the material? No, it got the stain out. Okay. It wasn't really rubbing the material off. And I wasn't I wasn't using a lot of pressure. I was using a brush, not like a not like a sponge or, okay. or you know something hard to really apply that that soft scrub okay. grit to the bottom. To the um, what about as far as you know the the materials held up pretty well like traction you you're always taking you know, it's got two big dogs that he takes out on the boat i think a yeah. black lab that weighs probably 100 pounds oh she i wouldn't give her that much she's gained some weight though recently <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah they're both one's probably about 75 pounds and the other's about 55 pounds and no issues with it no they they do good they're i mean <laughs> the boat the boat pitches a good angle when you're getting up on plane and sometimes they slide a little bit right uh you know and you hear their nails kind of sliding on the deck they haven't gotten through the paint once yet that's awesome cool even jumping from the dock <laughs> so um you know really just really that's all we we have to cover do you have anything else matt that you want to talk about through the process or any questions you get that are you know frequently asked by customers before we jump into to comments here it's a good question i would say um you know, one of the questions we get is how long should you wait between um, you know, between coats? Yep. I could tell you from my experience, I waited 24 hours between coats. So I painted, I put my first coat of paint down on Saturday, mm -hmm. and it was around I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning. And then 10 o'clock the next morning on Sunday, I put my second coat down, and it was ready to go in 24 hours. Awesome. They say 24 to 48 hours after you've done it, it should be ready to go. Awesome. Let's go to the comments here. Um, we've got Jeff, does this chip easily or what does it uh, take to make a chip? So that's a, a great question. Kind of my question about the dogs, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I would say that that's probably the most aggressive thing you're doing in your boat is having dogs yeah. with long nails run around on it. Yeah. I mean, sliding five gallon buckets, yeah. you know, I, I dive, I spearfish. Um, your gun tip so ever? I'm chipping. pretty careful with that. Okay. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't had that happen yet. I can say that I do have one spot on the boat, kind of where the seat locks go on the whaler, mm -hmm. where when we were test fitting a, a piece of plywood, so, you know, one of the guys on the other side of the boat just kind of dropped that corner of the plywood pretty hard, and it, I got maybe that much of a scrape. I mean, maybe a quarter inch of a scrape into the paint. But that, and that was, scrape like hasn't like started like when you, you no, peel off one little area and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's that's held together pretty well. Yeah, it hasn't expanded at all. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Sarah asks, can you send or can you use any type of roller? So no. So Tough Coat actually recommends using the roller that we show we showed on the website earlier. Yeah. Um, they specifically recommend that roller because that's what they've had the best results with. Okay. And so we and for spreading the material for appropriately for right. making sure you get even application of the aggregate. That way you don't have, you know, spots that have a lot of a lot of rubber and spots that have a little rubber. You sure. get good even application across the surface. So that's specific to the paint, not the primer you mentioned. With the Correct. primer, you can use whatever Any roller you want. Mm -hmm. Um, another question, follow up from Sarah. Would you recommend rolling the paint on or spraying? I think we covered that. Uh, well, it's, we it's, covered you can do both. We <laughs> didn't can cover which one. Um, I think what you're comfortable with, right? I, I say do what you're comfortable with. I would say the majority of the time, the feedback I hear from customers is that they rolled it. Okay. Um, and post, a lot of people maybe don't have a sprayer. You spent $20 on a gun at Harbor compressor Freight. that could handle spraying paint. Uh, you know, so it, and a lot of times people are more familiar with rolling sure. than spraying. So. I wanted to spray it because I just wanted to get it done quick. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the the roll there there really isn't a difference between the applications. The the finished product still comes out about the same. Awesome. We've got Bulldog thirty seventy one. Can this go over an existing non skid or must the old surface be removed? So we we did talk about that. I guess you can put it over a tough coat. I mean, so or you you can. So it, it's a good question and. Um, like I, I can tell you on, on my boat, my boat has a rolled on non-skid into the, I shouldn't say rolled on, it has a non-skid molded into the gel coat. The liner, I, the it, liner of the boat, right? right? It's in the gel coat, exactly. I did not remove that. Okay. In fact, I knew that was there and I wanted that to be there. And uh, in my application, I did something a little bit different knowing that that was going to be there. But 
uh, it, you, you can put it on directly over you know, a diamond pattern non-skid. What you want to make sure of though is whatever you're putting the paint over, it's it has a good bond or is molded into the into the gel coat. I gotcha. So, it, for example, some of the other um, you know deck paints have sand in them, and as you walk on that on that non-skid, the sand will work through the paint and get come loose, and you find you know some sand gets loose from the deck. Right. If you were going to paint over that, I wouldn't recommend it because that can still come loose over time and create separations in the paint where it's bonded to the deck, and then it becomes unbonded, and then you might have it, it, it will shorten the lifespan of the deck. So making sure your substrate doesn't have any imperfections in it to where that it's not going to fully bond to that deck. Yeah, exactly. You gotcha. know, if you have if you have peeling paint on the deck, get it all off. Okay. <laughs> if you want the best adhesion. Uh, Andrew's uh, comment: When it says smooth on the website, is it not textured? So that's a great question. That is Let's a really good question. Switch back over here. Um, I think if we zoom in. Uh, we can see a little bit better. I don't think I did a good job zooming earlier here. So, you know, so, here's the actual full zoom, right? Far right is the course, right? So you can see we've zoomed all the way in here now. Thank goodness we're not zooming in on us. <laughs> it's pretty rough. <laughs> it's a it's a pretty aggressive texture. Uh, you know, the 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 standard, what the medium, what we have on the website, that's what I would call tough coat standard. That's what tough coat calls their standard, and it. It, like I said, it might be a little bit rough on some knees. Uh, it's not too bad on hands but and feet, but something hard like knees or elbows, it's a little bit more rough. The smooth is just a much finer grain of the rubber that they put into the paint. And it does a good job adding traction. In fact, I think we have some of the smooth that's on our shop floor here at our manufacturing facility. And it's held up over the last four years to crazy traffic. Awesome. Um, but yeah, the smooth definitely has a texture to it. Cool. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for comments. Um, you know, we're we're gonna kind of close out the segment here. One of the things that we always say, you know, if we've left something off here, if you have any questions, please comment below. If you have an, another idea of a different segment that you want us to go into and, and give you some more information, please, please comment. We've got somebody that's always staying up on our social media monitoring this. Um, if you have questions in general, right, you know, we've, we've got some good info in this video, we've got some information on the site, but, you know, that's really our deciding difference is the team that sits over here across from us, that if you have a question, give us a call. We either give know, a call. give Matt a call, <laughs> he's done it, we don't know the exact answer, we've got the relationships with the vendors that we can figure it out. Um, you know, again, there's, if there's anything else that we can help you with, please do not hesitate to reach out. Other than that, we just really appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks.